Hats, on the other hand, they're in ninth, but they've been playing a lot better after a really rocky opening three matches, and it's really been in large part due to their attack coming back to life. Three goals scored against 1904 FC in that win on August 28th, and last week bagged the equalizer against Stumptown in the 73rd minute. Now our player to watch tonight, Robert, is a former Stumptown striker in Molly Carpe Jr. who scored that equalizer. Yeah, he did. Um, <laughs> you know, if you want to know what the uh, definition of irony is, um, you, you take that situation with Molly Carpe um, after we, we talk about how Stumptown is missing a player like that from this squad and then you know he comes back to to kind of bite him a little bit last week um there's someone they're gonna have to watch out for uh with that back line he's that type of holding uh the striker that's gonna hold up play effectively um that uh, stumptown doesn't have and so uh from a dis defensive perspective they're gonna have to watch out for for what he's able to do um getting free for for headers like he did in the in the game last week and and also again holding up play Carpe has scored in back-to-back -back matches off the bench, and he gets his first start of the season tonight. And speaking of those 11s, Robert, those are ready for the visitors in Maryland Bobcats FC. It's Christian Calker returning to goal his first time in net in the last three matches. Then Richard Forca and Jake Dengler are the center backs. Davey Mason and Samuel Kasai are the fullbacks. Yaya Fane, Andy Alvarado, Alex Cow, Jocelyn Posian, and Mohamed James Cisse are the midfielders. And rounding out the 11 is Molly Carpe. Jr. Meanwhile, for Stumptown, it's the same lineup they've been rocking with the last two or three games. Gonzalez in goal. Frankie Martinez and Nicholas Amponsa are the center backs. Deshaun Nemhard and Reese Williams, the fullbacks. Giovanni Bejarano Navia, Colin Stripling, Luis Garcia Sosa, Jared Odenbeck, and Alex McGrath make up that, uh, that five block in midfield. And up top, Travis Ward. We're just about set for kickoff here at the Stumplex. Stick with us here on the 11 Sports Network. Cool? Yep. We're ready to roll. It's a good time to be ready to roll, given we're 30 minutes before kickoff. <sighs> well, more than that, actually. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're chilling. We're chilling. Oh, uh, wait. I, to, in this pivotal reverse fixture on 11 sports. I'm going to make sure I say drop the 11 sports really early. Um, I don't have an extra piece of paper. I just have this one. Scratch. I'm not scratching nothing. There will be no scratching of any kind. What? Oh, I got to check. Let's see what the college football scores are looking like. How much is Alabama winning? Uh, 37,000 to nothing. I don't know who they're playing. Uh, you're close. It's 45-7. <laughs> <laughs> who are they playing? Mercer. Uh, George is up 49-0 on UAB, and they're playing, they're playing their backup. Their backup? Yeah, they're playing. Everybody? They're, well, JT backup. Daniels is injured, so they're playing Stetson Bennett. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Stetson. What a, what a name right there. That's a first name. A&M's losing to Colorado. Uh, Cincinnati's bullying Murray State. <coughs> Clemson's up 35-0. Penn State's up 34-6. Um, That's what they should be. Yeah. Alabama, uh, Bryce Young has 227 yards and three touchdowns, and I think they've... What's, what, what quarter is it? Uh, third. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was up four on Iowa State at halftime. Nice. Yeah. So Oregon beat Ohio State. That today. game was wild. Ohio State's defense was trash. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, who else? Who else won? Oh, Notre Dame survived. They beat Toledo by three. That's not good. Yeah. Notre Dame isn't that good. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this away real quick. Ah! That didn't hurt. I was just messing. Okay, cool. I just wanted to see what you do. Yeah, I'll have to do that too.
Noda Brewing Company is celebrating 10 years this October and is one of the Charlotte area's winning breweries with gold medals from the Great American Beer Festival and the World Beer Cup. Stop by their northern tap room seven days a week for a family-friendly environment and, of course, some of the best beer around. Look for the Noda Brewing Company's World Beer Cup gold medal winner, Hop, Drop, and Roll, at your nearest concession stand tonight. Stumptown AC is proud to support StreamCharlotte.org and help in planting new seeds all over the Matthews area in recognition of great team accomplishments and milestones. Join us in also supporting StreamCharlotte.org to make a difference in the future of Matthews. Remember, we play for the trees. StreamCharlotte.org.
Hometown AC would like to say thank you to Brown Bag Catering for their help at tonight's match. Brown Bag is committed to delivering simple but delicious healthy food and seeking to build relationships in the community and provide excellent customer service. Go to brownbag.com to work. Town AC is proud to partner with Ortho Carolina for all their medical needs this season. At Ortho Carolina, personalized orthopedic care begins with the click of a mask. With online scheduling, face time while booking by providing a provider or office location, whatever makes sense for you. And with more than 40 convenient locations, there's an Ortho Carolina office nearby. At Ortho Carolina, it's my care, my way. Just your appointment online today at orthocarolina.com. Town Athletics, which is a Maryland Bobcat coach team and the National Independent Soccer Association promotes good sportsmanship by players, coaches, and other fans. We request your cooperation in supporting the players, coaches, and match officials in a positive manner. Profanity, tweets, derogatory comments, or other intimidating actions directed at players, officials, or club representatives 
Soccer Shop is proud to be named an official partner of Subtown AC. Everything for the fan, coach, and player. Youth and adult players all get their soccer gear from Soccer Shop. Located in Pineville, across from the Carolina Place Mall. If you can't get to the store, please visit us at playwatchwear.com. Have your gear shipped right to your front door. Soccer Shop. Play. Watch. Wear. is the official soccer ball and apparel supplier for the Thumbtown Athletic Club and Youth. For more information, please visit Hummel.us. And that's close to the...
Clubs and counting, the National Independent Soccer Association is growing. With further expansion on the horizon, we appreciate your support of the newest professional league in the United States. To follow our league and all of our independent clubs, please visit nisasoccer.com.
And please visit the nice food trucks on the concourse for a fight tonight in the Noda Brewing Concession Center for alcoholic beverages. Thank you to our food truck and Noda Brewing. Stumptown 18 keeps the party of the season with a major league soccer and international legend, Marco Antonio Echeverria, to the Charlotte area to bring with your soccer playing future stars and find us in soccer training at the Marco Echeverria Soccer Academy. Marco will bring his experience and training methods from North and South America, along with many internationally qualified coaches, to prepare your young players for the competitive levels of soccer at home. Register with Marco Echeverry Soccer Academy for the best training around at MarcoAntonioEcheverry.com.
And in just a few moments, both teams will enter the field of play. Stumptown 8C and the Maryland Bobcats FC are pleased you could be here. We invite you to settle in for what should be a terrific evening of professional soccer right here at the Sports Collection at Matthew. Ladies and gentlemen, here is this evening's starting lineup for the Maryland Bobcats FC. Andy Alvarado, goalkeeper Christian Coulter, defender Jake Dengler, midfielder Yaya Bani, defender Richard Porter, defender Daniel Kassar, midfielder Alex Cow, who will be your captain, defender Davey Mason, forward Molly Carpe, midfielder Mohamed Cisse, And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's this evening's starting lineup for your Stumptown AC. Defender, Giovanni Berhanu. Midfielder, Luis Garcia Sosa. In goal, Kevin Gonzalez. Captain, Frankie Martinez. Midfielder, Alex McGrath. Defender, Travis Ward. Defender, Reese Williams. Midfielder, Jared Odenbeck. Midfielder, Colin Stripling. Defender, Nicholas Santosa. Defender, Sean Lamford. Stumptown AC is coached by Rod Underwood, assisted by Drew Gates, Chris Newton, and Mike McGowan.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Maryland Bobcats FC from your Stumptown AC. Please welcome the officials for this evening's match. The referee is William Hoffman. He is assisted on the line by Ed Waddell and Chad Mills. The sports official is Luis Osorio. In remembrance of those who lost their lives in the tragic event 20 years ago on September 11th, both in service of our country and as civilians, we would like to ask our fans to please rise and give a warm round of applause to all those in attendance today who have served or currently serve in our military and first responders. Please continue standing for the player of our national anthem by Oscar Huerta. It's a beautiful evening here in Matthews, North Carolina, and two bottom half teams will look to climb up the NISA table in a pivotal reverse fixture here on 11 Sports. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Stumplex alongside Robert Morrison. I'm Sam Goldfarb. Thrilled to bring you the action today as Stumptown AC hosts Maryland Bobcats FC in match week six. And these two sides, they faced off last Saturday. They drew 1-1 at the Maryland Sportsplex, but Robert, despite the fact that Stumptown got back in the goals there were plenty of chances that you think they would have liked to have back yeah absolutely uh sam a couple of really glaring opportunities including uh a breakaway one-on-one -on -one against the goalkeeper opportunity for alex mcgrath um and a uh, a well-worked late opportunity that uh um, tr both travis ward and alex mcgrath had had shots and opportunities to, to get the ball in the back of the net two very very clear chances that they just couldn't take advantage of um uh, either from poor decision making or poor execution or, or something along those lines but those are things they're going to want to cut out uh, tonight for sure. Stumptown has scored just four goals in its opening six matches and they sit in seventh with six points and the visiting Maryland Bobcats they enter in ninth but they found a period of better form after dropping or struggling in their first three matches. They've gotten four from their last two and a big part of that has been the revitalization of their attack. They've scored three goals against 1904 FC in their first win of the season a couple weeks ago and then scored the equalizer against Stumptown last Saturday and our player to watch Robert is the guy who scored the equalizer last Saturday a former Stumptown striker in Molly Carpe Jr. 
Yeah, uh, it's it's kind of funny. We we've been talking all year with this Stumptown team about the the issues that they've had converting chances into goals. Um, and a guy like 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 Carpe Jr. is the is the type of player that they've been missing. Um, and he really just provides some hold up play. Um, he's got the size and the strength to to provide opportunities for for his other. Uh, goal scorers, but also, as you noted, he's he's scored now twice in his last two matches, both as substitutes, um, and so he's going to get a chance to start against his former club tonight. We'll see if uh, he can take advantage of that or if Stumptown has the answers for him. Carpe has scored in back-to-back -back matches off the bench, and he gets his first start of the season tonight. And speaking of the starting lineups, we have those available for you for Stumptown. It's as per usual. Kevin Gonzalez in goal, Frankie Martinez and Nicholas Amponsa are the center backs. The fullbacks, Reese Williams and Deshaun Nemhard in midfield, Giovanni Bejrano Navia, Colin Stripling, Luis Garcia Sosa, Alex McGrath, and Jared Odenbeck. And up top, that's Travis Ward. For Maryland, it's Christian Calker in goal returning after a two-match absence. Richard Forca and Jake Dengler are the center backs. Davey Mason and Samuel Kasai are the fullbacks. Yaya Fane, Andy Alvarado, Alex Cow. Jocelyn Posian, Mohamed James Cisse are the midfielders. And up top, it's Molly Carpe Jr., the man we just highlighted. We're just about set for kickoff here, and we are underway before we get everything going here in the broadcast and bring everything down. We just have to send our thoughts out to everybody. It is a eventful day, the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks. We send our thoughts out to anybody affected, and we would like to thank, once again, any family members or first responders themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Um, hard to believe it's been... 20 years, um, but uh, time flies, as they say. And Stumptown will get on the ball first. They will be hoping to orchestrate a bit more attacking output than they did in Maryland last weekend. But, Robert, the big story was they created a bunch of chances, but just didn't put them away. And what needs to change, do you think, for Stumptown to fix that problem? Yeah, um, I think it's, it's just the thing that, that I talked about at the top. It's it's an opportunity that they need to to take advantage of. They they have been creators, um, and it's about being clinical in front of net and taking better opportunities to 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 finish those 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 chances. It's going to be a throw for the stumps and reset through McGrath, and now for M Ponza. Stumptown going to look to build from the back. This is where they're most comfortable. And now to Nemhard, who's been shifted to fullback. It's going to be out for a throw. And Robert, before we get underway and into the thick of things, it's time for Robert's Rules. What are your keys for Stumptown today? Absolutely. We already alluded to the first one, Sam, um, and that is finishing. But this is not just finishing in front of goal, but also finishing the match. I think one thing that we've seen from Stumptown several times this season is giving away uh, late leads or uh, late potential ties, and they put themselves in position to, to lose points. So they got to be really careful with that. Uh, the second thing for Stumptown is to handle the press. Uh, Maryland was utilizing that a great deal um, on in last Saturday's game, and I, I thought Stumptown handled it really well. They're going to have to do that again tonight um, to control the game. Some quick link between Ward and Garcia Sosa. Excellent point, Roberts. Those are <laughs> your three keys of the match as Cissé intercepts. And this is the danger man for Maryland Bobcats. He leads the team with two goals and one assist. Had a one goal, one assist performance on the 28th in that win over 1904 FC. And he actually had five goals and one assist in the spring season and Legends Cup if you combine those 11 matches together. Yeah, he's a quick guy. Um, he, he definitely gave uh, Stumptown a little bit of trouble uh, in last week's game. And uh, he, he seems to have, like a lot of the Stumptown players, a lot of freedom to, to move around and find space for himself. And now Maryland surging upfield through Mason. Davey Mason making his second straight start, made his professional debut with the Bobcats last week. And this is a storyline Maryland's had to deal with all year. They've had to shift their back line completely around. They've already played seven guys in starting spots in the back line over the course of the first five matches. So not a lot of stability or consistency at the back, but Maryland launching an attack in the opposite direction as Ward will intercept. Cleared only as far as Cal, the captain, still being knocked around. It's a bit of loose play in the area Stumptown looks to clear, but Williams will twist out of trouble and look down the line for Garcia Sosa. And it'll be interesting to see how Stumptown mi mixes and mashes that front four. We talk about 4-2 freedom virtually every time we cover a Stumptown <laughs> game. And 
Robert, we were talking about the trade-off, right? Because it's very difficult if you're Stumptown and things are moving slowly and you're not on the same wavelength. It doesn't pay off, but when it's at its best, it's really, really difficult to stop for opposing defenders. Yeah, I mean, don't have a lot of comfort with it from a from an attacking point of view. Thrown to Ward. An interesting strategy. They're pushing the fullbacks up for Maryland in Forca and Mason and making Stumptown break it. But McGrath does so here and down the line for Garcia Sosa. Flag is up on the far side. Speaking of loose front lines, it's a bit surprising how much uh, Maryland is flopping as well, or flip flopping in terms of who's uh, in the striker spots. It <laughs> looks like it's Cisse and Carpe, but you see other guys shifting further forward and getting involved in the attack, and their fullbacks are being very aggressive so far. Yeah, I was just just thinking that myself as I was trying to. We have a, a little board here where we have the where we take our best chance at. Our, our best guess at what the, the formation is going to look like. And the first couple of minutes are, are often trying to move that around to try to make the, the best guess turn into what we actually see. But it is kind of all over the place. Um, so a lot of movement on their side, too. Um, it looks like, for example, uh, Fane, who we mentioned as a defensive midfielder, is actually playing center back um, tonight. So who knows? Reese Williams fouled on the far side and trying to get up gingerly. And Williams, obviously a crucial piece of this Stumptown attack. He scored the opener on Saturday off a corner. And it just provides so much value in attack as well as defense. Yeah, I mean, I think we've, we've talked about this a lot, but Reese Williams has probably been their best player um, by a, a very large margin so far this season. Um, you would like to get more from, from players like Alex McGrath and Travis Ward for sure, um, but having that sort of stability uh, from Reese Williams has been has been really important. Williams fouled once again, this time by Alvarado. And Alvarado operating as more of a winger. Looks like Cow and Posian are in defensive mid, and Cissé is the free-roaming 10, even though he's wearing number 99. <laughs> Stripling played back for Bejarano Navia and trying to chip long for Williams. And you'll see him get very far forward. It's going to be key to countering the fullback pressure that comes the opposite direction. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see. Um, one thing that I noted uh, from the game on Saturday is that uh, Nemhard was, was actually getting forward a lot more um, than we've seen him. And you, you have to think that maybe there's a certain level of comfort that's coming with him getting more uh, comfortable again playing that fullback position after starting as a center back this year. Bejanano Navio plays back for Amponsa. And Maryland Bobcats is a very interesting background. This club was founded in 2016, but they weren't named the Maryland Bobcats. They were named World Class Premier Elite. They were an amateur team for players to stay fit as they sought pro deals. Then eventually, they won the Washington Premier League and the American Mar Maryland Major Soccer League, played in the UPSL, and lost just one match in their first season, and then in their second season went undefeated and won the national championship in the UPSL, or in the NPSL, um, and now switching to NISA during the COVID pandemic. They look down the line for Williams. He bundles over what looks to be Mason and a free kick going Maryland's way. So a very interesting backstory. You don't usually see clubs, I mean, you see clubs transition from amateur to professional, but you don't usually see a club that's built as more of an organization and uh, a loose group of former pros or, or aspiring pros go from that to something like this, an organized profession now in Maryland. Yeah, generally not. Um, obviously, the with Nisa being so young and with the vast majority of, of American soccer clubs being so young, um, you're bound to sort of run into things like that. But it is a kind of, it's a really interesting story for sure. Now here's Travis Ward, takes a long ranger and just misses wide of the near post. A really audacious shot from Ward, and he almost steered it into that near post corner. Yeah, that was a good opportunity. The uh, Bobcats' back line fell asleep off the throw, and Garcia Sosa sort of slipped in and was able to, to find some space and able to get the ball to Travis Ward. He was sneaking up at the top of the box, and um, good good opportunity, But and you know made the, the goalkeeper worry, but got to test him a little bit more, I think, on that shot. I've got to say, Ward and McGrath uh, look very confident in link-up play to kick off tonight. Um, as as well they should be. I mean, they had such a good uh, spring season. It's it's very interesting the start that both of them got off to. 
It's been very slow. You know, we talked about Alex McGrath not being a major part of this team for the first couple of weeks, um, and Ward seems to seem to have, have missed having him out there. Um, but I think as as time builds up, they seem to be getting uh, back to where they were when uh, during last season. McGrath whipped in the corner that led to Reese Williams' goal. For some reason, he wasn't credited with the assist. <laughs> um, I don't know what the that seems what, unusual. What the criteria is for it, but it seemed to fit it. As Williams drills it down the line for Ward, being knocked around, and it should go out for a Stumptown corner, and we have one. Tenth minute, first set piece on the way here in a somewhat threatening position as Ward is slow to get up. Yeah, this is an opportunity that Stumptown have got to take advantage of. They've shown, you know, pretty good skill. Um, off the the dead ball situations, especially from corner kicks. Scored last week on one of them. We've seen them uh, with a lot of training ground uh, opportunities in these situations, so we'll see what they can do with it today. Here's Garcia Sosa, another training ground routine, now taken short for Ward. Another driller, and just missing the far post that time. Goodness gracious. He is, he's targeted <laughs> that bottom left corner multiple times, and... Again, this one just agonizingly rolling past it. Yeah, he seems to to see something. I don't know if it's something that he's paying attention to um, from Cockler in in that particular situation, or if it's just something that he's seen from from the the Bobcats goalkeeper from from past situations. But he is attacking that particular part of the goal, and he is inches away from from having scored twice already tonight. Kasai out wide for Mason. And Ponce gets ahead in the way. And Christian Cocker, the starting goalkeeper for Maryland Bobcats FC. He's a 32-year-old from Freetown, Sierra Leone, and was the regular starter, but then picked up a red card in the 63rd minute of a 3-0 defeat to Chattanooga and was on the bench since. Uh, he's back. He played international football with Sierra Leone from 2007 through 2013, had 19 caps. And he's played all over the place. His youth club, Sierra Leone Calon FC, was his first club. Then he was on loan for one year in Sweden. So a ton of experience that's come with his age. As Carpe will scoop this one up on the near side and sprinting at Martinez. Cross can't quite find the head of what looked to be Cisse and it's going to go out for a Gonzalez goal kick. It's probably the opposite of the way that they would like that target situation to go. If you're a Maryland Bobcat, you'd rather have Cissé running up with it and Carpe on the end of it. The, uh, the flip-flop is probably not as effective. Carpe did score the equalizing header in the 73rd minute last Saturday. Gonzalez actually parried it up off a corner, and Carpe did very well to just cannon it into the back of the net. Gonzalez apologizing to the fans after, but if you're a Stumptown supporter, you can't really be too mad. Gonzalez has been a crucial piece of this side the last two seasons. Yeah, absolutely. Been one of the, the best uh, keepers in, in Nisa the last couple of years um, and has really kept them in matches in a lot of cases. Garcia Sosa searching Ward and finds him on the near side. Good diving tackle from what looks to be a Jake Dengler, and it will be a Stumptown throw. Taken quickly now for Ward. Flag stays down. And now saying it's Maryland's possession, or I, at least the flag said that. I'm very confused. I thought I heard somebody, maybe it was the referee, say something about a about the throw. I Regardless, if, fork is to take maybe a foul throw. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. Um, all I heard was something on the throw. Yeah, he's uh, the referee's now indicating that there's a that there was a throw issue. So Forka will resume play for Maryland. Interesting. Very interesting decision <laughs> there, but. Forka, one of the more regular defenders, making his third consecutive start at the back. Maryland's introduced three or four new defenders into the starting lineup in the last two or three games. Now over for Reese Williams, pressured by Cissé and can't quite find Odenbeck. And Cissé surging into space. This is what you don't want to see if you're a Stumptown fan with the ability Cissé has shown over the last two seasons. He's the National Junior College Player of the Year in 2018 and in two seasons with his college, I believe Richmond Dallas College, set the program record for goals with 55. In two seasons? In two seasons. Gracious. <laughs> and here is Posian. Back for Yaya Fane. Had a bit of an error that led to that big McGrath chance we talked about in the open. Yeah. Um, again, just kind of got a little lazy with the ball. McGrath took it from him, who's, let you know, to be fair, not known for his defensive prowess as he... Commits a foul here, um, and but 
kind of in two minds and didn't really know what to do with the ball. And the, the keeper came at him, and I think he just – didn't never got a shot off. It was really unfortunate. It was a good opportunity that uh, Stumptown needed to take advantage of at that point in the game. And speaking of opportunities, teams can take an advantage of a free kick right here for Maryland Bobcats. Thank you for the segue, Robert. Touche. Uh, it looks like Dangler standing over. This is a center back. Um, we'll see if he actually takes it. It also looks like Alex Cow, uh, one of the main players for Maryland in defensive midfield, takes a look. Look, I'm not a, a soccer manager, but I would feel like you want – Dangler on the other end of this thing, but who knows? Maybe we'll see. Dangler to take. It's a rocket wow. that dips into Gonzalez's gloves. Not too shabby. Not not too shabby at all. I, I wonder if that's a situation where Dangler taking it gives away the intent of what he's going to do. Like if the if the plan is to, to put a ball in that, that you can play off the head, he's a very tall human being, and you'd think you'd want him in there to, to, to make a play off that in that situation, but... Obviously, the direct, if the plan was for a direct free kick, then you don't need him there. Fancying himself a David Luiz, isn't he? Maybe. And here is Mason, as we mentioned, made his debut for Maryland, drills this inside for Kasai, and Stripling marking him quite well. But yeah, Mason in his second straight start. And Bejarano Navia still battling for it. No whistle on the far side, and Maryland will just look to recycle. And the question for Maryland is, their attacks come back to life. They scored four, four in the last two games as Davey, excuse me, as Dangler takes a long-range effort, can't quite steer it on target. But Maryland scored four in the last two matches, had three against 1904 FC, and then one against a very good Stumptown back line that's only conceded now six goals all year. But the question is, can they continue that momentum, and does the burden rest too heavily on a guy like Cisse, who is admittedly the main man in terms of creativity. Yeah, you'd think so. Um, and, and you got to wonder if, if uh, Carpe's form over the last uh, two games has something to do with, with his starting here and them wanting to take advantage of, of the goals that he's been scoring and to, to alleviate some of that pressure on Cissé so that he doesn't have to be the only person responsible for scoring goals um, as he has been throughout much of the year. Also, Taylor Gray and Kay Banjo, the other two strikers who have scored this season, are unavailable tonight. So a lot of burden on Carpe and Cissé. And now drilled in, brilliant ball for Garcia Sosa along the touchline. Tries to put a move on what looks to be Fane, and it's knocked out for a goal kick, much to the chagrin of the man down on the touchline in Garcia Sosa. Maryland will look to reset quickly. It goes out for a stump down throw. Yeah, I, I, th I feel like Garcia Sosa needed to do something with that ball. It, and that feels to me pretty indicative of, of the type of, of things that we've seen from, from Stumptown in a lot of situations where the creativity is that was a, a great ball, as you noted, by, by Nemhard. And just to, to kind of dance around in the box with it and not take a shot, even if it's a one time, like make the, the keeper work, you never know what's going to happen as, as – as Stumptown should have learned from last week where, you know, the ball parries off the goalkeeper or something and you got a wide open net on the other side. That's an opportunity that, that you want to see Garcia, Garcia says to do something with. Ward loses out to Kasai. Battling now on the near side. Intriguing ball, but Gonzalez will win the foot race. And nemhard has been getting a lot further forward, as you mentioned. He's looked very confident tonight, and that was a phenomenal ball with him in a very advanced position. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you, you got to think that, again, as I mentioned before, he's he's getting more and more comfortable in that position, um, and and that's that's good because it again provides balance. We've been talking a lot about how Reese Williams has uh, a lot of free reign to get forward. You can see how how far forward he is right now. He's you know about as as far deep as as Odin back on on the in the midfield, but if Nemhard could could do the same thing, you put more pressure on the opposing defense. Cocker drawn into a bit of a nervy situation, and Mason will look to navigate out of traffic. Stumptown troubling Maryland with the long balls down the wings, and that's where they're most dangerous, especially given the lack of a true center forward. They like to attack in 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 bunches along the flanks. And sometimes that can lead to them being very predictable, but other times when they link very fast, as we talked about, it's really hard to stop them or see where the ball's going. Now Dengler navigating the pressure from Garcia Sosa, the main center back alongside Fane tonight. From Baltimore, Maryland, a UConn grad. He and Alex Cow, both UConn products. Now back for Cocker. 
Stumptown was struggling to alleviate some pressure early, but in the last, say, 10, 15 minutes or so, Robert, they've really done a good job ramping it on themselves. Yeah, absolutely. They've had pretty good control of possession. It doesn't look like Maryland has been as interested in pressing as they were, especially early on in the in the game last week. Um, kind of an interesting tactical change in that regard, but um, you wonder if, if this is what happens when you have teams that play each other like this in a back-to-back -back scenario um, where they're able to learn some things about what to do and what not to do, and Stumptown, again, handled the, the presser pretty well last week. And you wonder, does that tighten things up or open things up seeing a team once before? <laughs> I mean, I guess it just sort of depends on what the what what you want to do. I think um, Stumptown has the, the, the slight advantage in that they're the, the home team in the second match, which puts them in a, a slightly more comfortable position overall um, and to be able to see what, what they can do and what they can't do uh, with Maryland. Maryland launching an intriguing counter, and they've got a throw coming on the far side. Cisse building his way into the match. We'll see if he can really make an imprint on it as this cross drilled short and Ponce clears only as far as Forca inside of the boot shot strolls wide. Yeah, Maryland's offensive pressure has been pretty good so far, but their uh, actual opportunities that they've that they've taken with them have not been terribly scary. They haven't put any real pressure on on Gonzalez in goal so far. Um, not quite the same case for Stumptown on the other side. And Martinez will settle on this. Bit more pressure coming from Maryland, and he looks long for McGrath just outside his reach. And Stumptown sometimes will try to bypass midfield. Depending on who they're playing, it's a more viable strategy. When they're playing a team like Maryland that is defensively weak, you figure in buildup they'd be able to move them around a bit more as yep. Carpe dueling with Nemhart. Yeah, they're, they're passing. Stumptown's passing is generally pretty good. Um, in the midfield. So you'd think in this situation like this, they'd want to take advantage of, of Maryland's weakness in that regard, um, especially defensively. Forca to take yet another throw. He and Mason have been very key parts of attacks on the wings. Key overlapping run here from Mason once again as Alvarado hunts camps behind him. And now Alvarado cuts inside looking for Cisse, and it should be out for what seemed initially like a goal kick. Now it appears they may be motioning up to the corner flag. Or is he? No, he's call, he called Calling a foul. It back. He called yeah. it back. Interesting. So, so a free kick as the ball was knocked out of play. I saw McGrath slide in. I thought maybe that he made some contact with the ball, but apparently they uh, decided it was a foul. Looks like Kasai is set to take this. Looking at the center of the penalty area, and Williams clears only as far as Alvarado. Follow-up cross, and Dengler flicks it on. Williams will stroll away with it without too much trouble. And still knocked around as Williams dangled a foot and a free kick called against the stumps as Dengler down just outside the penalty area. I have so many questions about how that ball didn't go out of bounds in the first place. Like, it looked like it cleared the, the touchline on the far end, but very interesting run of play there. It kind of looked to me like like Williams and Dengler kind of got their legs caught up. I don't, I don't know about that, but nonetheless, a, another opportunity for, for Maryland Bobcats. And this probably their best of the match positioning-wise as we approach the midway point of the first half. Still nil-nil here on 11 sports between Stumptown AC and Maryland Bobcats FC. Stumptown sitting on six points and Maryland on five. Cissé standing over this one and you figure he'll have a say over where the ball is placed. And Kasai will vacate now. Floated to the back stick. Forca gets ahead to it, and it's past Gonzalez's gloves. 1-0 Maryland, and a phenomenal header at the back stick from Richard Forca. That was, that was pinpoint accuracy in, in both the cross and the, the header. I, I, 
that is one of those situations where you know half an inch to one side in either case it it doesn't happen the the, the way that it did that's that's definitely unfortunate for from a stump down point of view but also like how do you defend that i i just don't know everything about that was perfect from from the the, the cross to the the header just a great goal from Maryland Bobcats. A phenomenal overload by Maryland. And the beneficiary, Richard Forca, off of the perfect cross from Mohamed James Cisse. Cisse's second assist of the year. Forca's first professional goal with the Bobcats. It's his first major pro opportunity. He graduated McDaniel College in D3 in 2015. He had four goals and three assists in his career there. And now professionally on the score sheet as Maryland strikes first here at the Stumplex and Ward still down clutching his leg. So a bit of a flip of the script from Saturday, Robert. Maryland breaking the deadlock in the first half. Yeah, um, one one thing that Stumptown had in their favor last week, in, a, in a actually a very similar situation to be to be quite honest with you, that there are some shades of that Reese Williams goal from, from last week uh, in what we just saw. A little bit later in the match, obviously that was in the, the the tenth minute or something like that. Um, this this comes a little later than that, but Stumptown now on the back foot, um, a situation that they have not often found themselves in, and have have, have not been super comfortable playing from uh, throughout much of the season. Maryland Bobcats have only kept one clean sheet this season in five games. They've conceded a goal in each of the last two matches despite their defense tightening up and getting a little better. So we'll see if they can see this one out. The 25th minute goal scored by defender Richard Fork of the fullback at the back post. Heading it in, Gonzalez did what he could to try to keep it out, but it, too much power hit his hand and wound up in the back top corner anyway. Yeah. As Dangler will repossess this for Maryland and look down the line for Carpe. Former Stumptown striker in a Shoving match with Martinez and comes away with it on the touch line. Cross deflected and should be out for another set piece going Maryland's way. A corner on its way. Ooh, Molly Carpe showing off some strength there. Um, shoved his old teammate off the ball and, and made something happen there. And Carpe said before this week, I love those guys. I enjoyed playing with them, but my allegiance lies with Maryland. And getting a little chippy in the box, it looks like. Yeah, and this was a game that I remember you said six yellow cards on Saturday? Seven. Seven. Uh, yeah, seven yellow cards on Saturday. So it was a, it was getting a little chippy towards the end, um, and now we've, that looks like that's carried over. And this is another thing that can happen when you see the same team this twice in a row like this, um, is if there was anything that was sort of boiling over towards the end of last week, um, now we could run into a similar situation where some of that stuff can come into play here. This is the first of three back-to-backs on Stumptown's schedule. Yeah, very interesting uh, the way that works. And unusually, they always play, if I'm not mistaken, the home game at the second on the second game of the back-to-back. -back. So kind of unusual uh, travel schedule there from Stump for Stumptown. Kasai will take the outswinging corner here. 1-0 Maryland looking to compound the misery at the Stumplex. And still early, but Stumptown's going to need to weather this storm. Still little chippiness going on in the box. I'm not really sure what's going on. The referee sort of uncharacteristically staying out of it, which is unusual. Usually they're kind of like right in the middle of the, of the scrum. He's talking to Reese Williams. And there is a yellow delivered to both Carpe and Williams. So something must have been said, maybe too much shoving for the officials liking in the penalty area, but both Stumptown's right back and the striker for Maryland go in the book. Two former teammates going at it. Still nobody taking the <laughs> corner just yet uh, as it looks like Kasai stands yeah, over yeah, it, say waiting for the whistle. And now to, to take the outswinger. Another back post delivery. Dangler getting ahead to it. And it's going to float over the bar for a goal kick. See, that's what I was talking about earlier with the, the tall guy in the box on those situations. Um, he's he's the tallest person on, on the pitch by a, a, a good head, it looks like. So it makes sense for him to be in that situation for sure. Dangler only listed at 6'2", 180. The 22-year-old from Baltimore, Maryland, a UConn product, actually was signed to Loudoun United in the USL Championship before COVID hit in 2020. So there's a player down for Stumptown on the far side. 
So 1-0 Maryland courtesy of Richard Forca's opener off of a pinpoint free kick from the touchline from Cisse. It was a back post header that Cannon passed Gonzalez outstretched glove and ricocheted into the top corner. And that is the difference thus far. And we'll see if Maryland can see this one out. Obviously, we talk about their defensive struggles. They've allowed eight goals on the year already. But the defense has tightened up of late. So Mponza back to his feet. So is Martinez. And we look like we're just about set to resume play as they're going to take a look at Mponza, who is down for a bit. 30th minute, Robert, what are some adjustments you need to make if you're Stumptown? Because it looked like they were building their way into the match. It looked like they had the bit of the upper hand, and then they get caught out on that free kick, and since it's been a bit of a struggle. Yeah, this is this is where the, the sort of mental fortitude of, of the game comes in. Um, you, th They had the upper hand, as you, as you noted. Um, we're getting a lot of attacking opportunities early in the match, but the goal seems to have taken a little bit of life out of them. Um, so they've got to keep their heads up. I know that, that seems really cliche, um, but this is uh, being able to survive these next you know 10 or 15 minutes is just is going to be as much about what they can do mentally as as the physical element of it Cisse had a turn and shot but that doesn't quite trouble Gonzalez and Stumptown has rescued points from losing positions before last year against Cal United went down 1-0 and nicked a draw and this year even they played Cal United went down early and they flipped it by the 35th minute now granted they went down in like the third yeah but Garcia Sosa had a brilliant goal in the 19th, and Stripling flipped it around 16 minutes later, and Stumptown saw that one out. So they're a resilient bunch. The question is, can they produce enough attacking-wise and maintain the confidence in possession to rescue some points? That's the, the question we've had all year about this about this team, um, is can they, they turn creativity into goals? And it's a very tight Nisa table. Stumptown, to add to the crucialness of this game, They've played one more game than most of the league. Uh, with the exception of the Force, Cal United, and Michigan Stars, they find Ward on the near side, and the flag is up by the referee's assistant. The QC Royals and all the Stumptown fan base to our left, not too thrilled about that one. Nope. So a free kick coming up for Dengler. Drilled off Garcia Sosa's head, and <laughs> Fane will settle on it. <laughs> that was very funny. Garcia Sosa had no idea about that ball. It just nicked off his head. And Bejarano Navia gets a boot in the way to intercept, and he's crucial in holding mid. We've always talked about how he allows them to break the press, but Bejarano Navia is so good at snuffing out attacks at the source before they become something legitimate. Yeah, absolutely, and and, and it does a great job of, of stepping in front of the, the back four, and, and he is he is one of the pieces that allows Reese Williams to, to get forward as much as he does because you can trust the, that, that Bejarano Navia is going to be there uh, to help the defense if uh, any issues come up, if Reese Williams gets caught too far forward or anything along those lines. Williams linking with Odenbeck, and now Garcia Sosa, who's slowly finding his role expand in this one. And McGrath coming deep to claim. Just roaming free, but hasn't quite had the space he's wanted up front. Now looking for Nemhard. A good touch and a flick on for Ward. Forka will play this one back to Cocker. 33rd minute here at the Sportsplex at Matthews. In Matthews, North Carolina, you're watching the 11 Sports Network alongside Robert Morrison, Sam Goldfarb here. Stumptown AC trailing the visiting Maryland Bobcats. 1-0 courtesy of Richard Forca's 25th minute opener off of a free kick from the touchline. Just bashed one in with his head at the far post. Looking for Possein. And now Bejarano Navia. Possein hasn't quite been in the match attacking wise, but been on that little engine in midfield as they find Garcia Sosa on the long ball. The referee's flag stays down, taking on about three Maryland Bobcats at the touchline. The ball knocked out of play, and a corner on its way for Stumptown. So they've had one earlier in the half, and now another threatening chance. We'll see what kind of training ground move they've come up with here. Yeah, always good to see what they got um, from the corner. 
again, from Garcia Sosa, you want to see him be a little quicker in the decision making. He just didn't seem to know um, exactly what he wanted to do with that ball. Now, this worked out for him a little bit better, but um, in those circumstances, you, you got to wonder if he can do something a little bit more with that. McGrath on the delivery, the in swinger to the back stick. Odin Beck getting ahead to it. Travis Ward. And it looked like there was a foul right around the goal. Maybe there was contact between Cocker and Stripling. It's going to be a Maryland free kick. Yeah, it looks like Stripling's on the floor, so I can imagine that that was what happened there. He kind of got, I, I don't know if he ran into him, if he got shoved into the into the goalkeeper, but um, he's still down at the, at the minute. So, Colin Stripling, a crucial defensive midfield partner for Bejarano Navia. He scored the game winner against Cal United on August 28th. And that 2-1 win feels like ages ago after back-to-back -back draws and now this deficit sometimes facing at the minute. Yeah, it does. Um, they got to have some answers here um, over the course of the rest of this game as uh, Stripling's still down. And Colin Stripling, as we talked about, very critical piece in the starting lineup for Stumptown. We hope he's all right. And a lot of proven pedigree at the professional level. He played at multiple USL League One clubs. He also played um, for Monmouth from 2013 to 2017. He was a two-time All-Mid-American Athletic Conference second team selection and a first teamer in 2015. Yeah, we talked about Reese Williams being one of their better players or possibly their best player so far this year. I think uh, Colin Stripling has been in the conversation for, for being up there as well. Not nearly as instrumental uh, from game to game as, as Williams has been as both defensive and attack-minded kind of player. But Stripling is, is kind of that midfielder who, who uh, strings, strings the, the attack but from, from defense to attack, that uh, sort of box-to-box -box type of player and has been really instrumental in being part of this team. Stripling still down in the Maryland penalty area. And I can't tell if he's lacing up his boots or he's waiting for the physio's attention, but either way, both teams just waiting to get everything reset and stripling up to his feet and ready to go. Yeah, so it looked good like to see he him was, moving. was tying his shoes there. Um, uh, that's what I figured because nobody was coming for him. Yeah. And I assumed everything was fine. That would have been very bizarre to leave him sitting there when he needed help yeah, for so long. They'll leave the man down for <laughs> everybody fine. to leave see. Him. He's, he'll be all right. And looking up for Cisse, Bejaran Ranavia getting ahead to it. And now Garcia Sosa roams free. Two Maryland men down in the center circle. And Odenbeck had a brilliant bit of link up that led to Stumptown's equalizer against Cal United a couple weeks ago. And ran through the back of Garcia Sosa is Posian. And now the referee will come and tend to the man down in the center circle. So a free kick should be coming for Stumptown, but calling for the physios now. That looks like. Cannot tell. Yeah, we were yeah, we couldn't tell if that was a cow possibly. Or it could be Posion. So another break in the action here. Another man down this time for Maryland. And we hope he manages to get up and get everything going. This looks like actually Yaya Fane. Mm -hmm. So the center back a bit shaken up and will be ushered off the pitch by the physios. And you mentioned the last time these two teams met, it got chippy. And tonight, it seems to be boiling over once again. A, a little bit. There was a That was an interesting response as uh, Garcia Sosa tried to take that free kick uh, quickly and... and I think it was Mason who sort of jumped in and spiked the ball away with his foot. I don't think there was necessarily any negative intention there. He just saw his teammate down and was trying to maybe get Garcia Sosa's attention. Um, but th there, those are definitely things that, if taken the, under the wrong circumstances, could be could add to the, the the animosity that's building up between these two clubs. And this is a rivalry Stumptown has controlled largely. Beat Maryland in the Nisa Spring Opener 2-1 back in May as McGrath and Garcia so stand over this one. And then, of course, they drew last Saturday. But Maryland has yet to beat the Stumps, obviously now in a winning position to do so. So Garcia Sosa and McGrath will look to deliver. It's taken by the former. Now McGrath at the touchline. And Posian will clear out of trouble 
only as far as Gonzalez, who's way up out of net. It was a, qu a clever little play there. Um, another training ground technique that you like to see those type of situations. Just a little too heavy on the pass from Garcia Sosa. McGrath couldn't quite catch up to it. And Stumptowns, they've almost been forced to do this due to their lack of size and height up top as Garcia Sosa battling with Mason, and it's going to be ushered out for a goal kick. Yeah, uh, the deficiency that you're, that you're talking about, but with, with having a, without having a true striker sort of forces some creativity, when, especially in set pieces, um, where you need to, to take advantage of your opportunities as they come. Cissé turns quickly, looks for Carpe, but the flag's up on the near side. It was a well-worked move and a good turn from the Maryland star man, but free kick coming for the stumps. The fans getting a bit rowdier here at the Stumplex. It's a brilliant Saturday night for soccer. It's a nice fall evening. The weather slowly starting to be a bit more reasonable, if you will. And it's good to see everybody out and enjoying the game with their friends and family tonight. Now Bejrano Navia. Navigating past Kasai, who's in a more advanced role tonight. And Martinez strolling forward. And Nemhard, how far forward he is tonight. This has been very unusual for him. Again, you got to wonder if this is a game plan thing or just as he's gotten more in, in tune with the, the fullback role that he's starting to feel more comfortable moving forward. But that's about as far, far forward as I've seen him um, tonight, for sure. And you saw Maryland when they pressed. They deployed their fullbacks very far forward. Stumptown, they've always done that with Reese Williams, but they haven't been able to do it as much with Nemhard until the last couple games. So what dimension does that add to Stumptown's attack? Well, again, it provides balance. It's not so much just down the one side where Reese Williams is, and that forces the, the opposing defense to have to pay attention to, to both sides of the pitch, and it's not so much, okay, well, let's just pay attention to the right side. Um, and see how it goes. You can you have to pay attention to both sides. Williams delivers it to Ward in space. Good recovery by Mason. We'll see what Stumptown Star can conjure here. Cross deflected, and it's going to go out for a Stumptown corner here about a few minutes before the break. So big opportunity for the Stumps. Travis Ward has had some bright moments, and he's just waiting for that breakthrough in the final third. Potentially another opportunity for a training ground move, which... Seems like we constantly have these from Stumptown. Garcia Sosa taken short for McGrath. And now Williams, we've seen this cross before. Instead, a dinked flick. Still knocked around and cleared by Dengler. Don't know if that one came off exactly how they planned it. <laughs> yeah, you got to wonder how many of those passes are like a part of the plan and how many of them just sort of come up as as needed. Bejrano Navia under pressure from Kasai and back to Gonzalez. 42nd minute here at the Stumplex on 11 Sports Network. Sam Goldfarb, Robert Morrison. It's 1-0 Maryland. Richard Forca scoring the opener for the visitors in the 25th minute. A header off of a cross from Cisse on a free kick. It's pinpoint accurate and Finished off well, as we mentioned. Not much Gonzalez could do. It seems like a theme with a lot of the goals Stumptown have conceded this year. Kevin Gonzalez has been in decent spots for it, but just due to the fact that the shot is so well taken, it's almost impossible to keep out. Right, and it says a lot about his positioning, but also sort of defensively, uh, the positioning from Stumptown. They do a pretty good job of putting themselves in position to to defend sort of your your most most of your normal uh, shot opportunities, and it takes something close to a to a world class level sh strike to to get goals in. Looking down the line for Carpe and corralled, and Carpe a big hold up piece for Maryland. Something Stumptown's been missing. Now Stripling on the interception. Stripling known for his awareness and first touch, but he should be known for his header off laser crosses as well. <laughs> if you watch the Cal United game. Now looking for Garcia Sosa down the near side. Ward and LGS linking well. Now McGrath trying to switch the play. And Williams collects on the overlap. A good recovery by Maryland. For a moment there, they were stretched. Deflected pass. It's corralled by Cocker. And he will slowly wait to launch this one free. I'd be expecting a fair amount of... Uh 
injury time here at the end of the first half. We had a couple of pretty lengthy uh, breaks due to, to injuries to a player on each team. So it'll be curious to see what that number will look like here in a moment. Nemhard cuts off the long ball for Forka and can't quite find Ward on the near side. Nightfall slowly hitting here in Matthews and Stumptown with about a full half a play and change to alter the trajectory of this match. As Cissé will play a dummy and Williams will collect. And Robert, since the goal, you were right to identify Stumptown. I mean, they're beginning to build their confidence up again, but it looked like for a long period, a lot of things were fizzing out as they tried to build up. So what needs to change for the Stumps at halftime? What are you saying to them if you're Rod Underwood? Well, I mean, that goal sort of came out of nowhere. You know, it was very much against against the run of play. It, it wasn't as if Maryland was creating a, a lot of great opportunities. And then they had the 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 free kick near the, the edge of the box, and they took advantage of it. So I think you have to remind uh, your team that, that what happened there is not necessarily indicative of, of how well they've played, but these things happen. Goals, goals get scored. Three minutes will be added on by the fourth official. That long ball for Odenbeck intercepted by Mason. The match has slowed a bit, and that doesn't benefit Stumptown. They like fast-moving play that can stretch you, and at times this season it's been harder to come by as it looks like Williams has won a free kick on the far side or bare minimum a throw. Uh, free kick, it looks like. Um, but yeah, I mean, just to kind of continue that thought about about what the... It's it's a lot of the same things that we've been talking about. They're, they're getting... Um, they just need to get back to the created, creating of chances and and then and then when those chances come to, to really take them and, and put them in the back of the net and even this game up. I think by and large, the game has been pretty even. Posian on the interception, dragged down by Bejarano Navi, and that's going to produce a yellow professional foul there, Robert. <laughs> that was sort of an unusual looking circumstance because Bejarano Navi was trying to sort of pull him back and he didn't really go down. And then he, and then Bejarano Navi kind of got past him, took the ball, and then his legs kind of uh, <laughs> went down from Posian and he sort of took him out. It was sort of a bizarre looking play. So a free kick for Maryland here into added time. Three minutes tacked on to this one here in the first half. The Bobcats leading 1-0 as we approach the break and looking to compound the pressure here. Dangler on this free kick. We've seen he's got a little bit of a boot on him. And he'll look to deliver this one into the corridor of uncertainty. Instead, taking short for Mason. Sliding challenge from Williams and knocked out of play for another Maryland throw. Maryland last season got off to a rocky start, wound up finishing fifth in the spring table, right around mid-table, and it was an impressive accomplishment given the early season struggles. This year, a similar script. They dropped their first or they dropped two of their first three, and their only point was a scoreless draw. And since, four points in their last two matches. And leading here at a tough place to win in the Stumplex. Now Fane. Searching for Forca, the goal scorer. And he does well to keep it in play. And then he didn't. And then out for a <laughs> goal kick. He did well until he did not do well. That's my analysis of that particular moment. And Stumptown will look to hit before the break. Now Odenbeck for Behrano Navia and Williams searching for Odenbeck, who's been a more involved man in this Stumptown attack. Started the last three games after featuring as a spare, sparsely used sub and now getting his third consecutive start. But that's going to do it. For the first half here at the Sportsplex at Matthews, Stumptown AC trailing Maryland Bobcats FC 1-0 courtesy of a Richard Forca 25th minute header. So we're going to take a quick break for halftime and we'll be back with second half stats and analysis before we resume. But Robert, before we head into the tunnel, what were your observations from that half? 
Yeah, again, like I like I said before, the the goal was one of those things that that wasn't so much about Maryland's building up and creating pressure and all those sort of things. It was just sort of an inopportune foul that led to a a, a great cross on a, off a free kick and a, and a great header. Um, and now they have the lead. And uh, Stumptown has got to be um, again, kind of going back to that mental fortitude thing. They have to go into the locker room, you know, say, hey, that was tough. But we have had the upper hand at many times throughout much of this game so far, and, and take advantage of that, and and really use that momentum that they might have in terms of creation, and go in into the second half to to hopefully find the equalizer, and maybe even more than that. Stumptown trailing one nil at the break. We'll be back on Eleven Sports Network. Stick with us, Stumptown AC and Maryland Bobcats FC. We'll be back in a few moments.
Welcome back to Nisa Soccer on the 11 Sports Network. Stumptown AC currently trailing Maryland Bobcats FC 1-0 at the break, courtesy of a Richard Forca 23rd minute opener. It was a brilliant cross on a free kick from the touchline from Mohamed James Cisse for his second assist of the year. And Forca, Forca's header just powered past Gonzalez. And Sam Goldfarb here with Robert Morrison and Robert Stumptown looked like they were building a lot of confidence before that goal, but since things have been harder to come by attacking-wise, what really happened for the Stumps in that little sequence? Yeah, I mean, that's it's just like a shot in the foot. Like, everything's going so well, and then and then something comes out of nowhere, and suddenly it seemed to, like, you know, knock them out of their, out of their rhythm and, and put them in a position that they weren't comfortable in. We've talked a lot about how this team is in, is in a lot better – position when they're playing on the front foot uh when they don't when they're not playing from behind they haven't shown a lot of opportunities uh, they haven't had a lot of opportunities and haven't shown a lot of ability to to come from behind um barring that that cal united game that we that we talked about already um so this puts them in a position they recovered a little bit in the last you know 10 10 minutes or so of the of the half and they're gonna have to build on that into the second half and, and try to find that equalizer no changes that we're currently aware of for either side. So both sides just opting with their original 11. Maryland will take the opening kickoff of the second half. And Robert, you wonder, does the speed have to pick up a little more for stump time? Because I think whenever they got on the break, things slowed up a bit too quickly. Yeah, it, it, we were we were talking about this before the before the game started. Um, one of the downsides of this four-two-three thing is that sometimes it puts uh, people in a position uh, to where they they're not able to break as quickly as they want to because of of that. Of, of players moving from from side to side and from and not really knowing like who's in, who's going to be in front in those particular situations or anything along those lines as we do have two uh, Stumptown changes here. Two Stumptown changes. Yves Malongo and Elliot Cutts enter the action. So you'd assume they'll be taking up. Looks like Ward and I can't. Oh, no. Nope. Po possibly Stripling. Uh, yep. So it looks like Cuts will take a more advanced role alongside Behran Navia because Cuts is more of a proper center mid. And yeah, you see that. So Longo will enter as Stumptown surging forward through McGrath as well as Cuts. So we'll see how they line up. It looks like Cuts is in a quite advanced spot at the moment, and they've thrown at Longo into more attacking mid. So we haven't seen Elliot Cuts deployed much. He played in the earlier stages of the spring 2021 campaign, and then he kind of uh, didn't get as many reps towards the end of this year. And I don't even I don't believe he's made an appearance this season. So this is his first real crack at things here in the second 45 with Stumptown trailing and a dramatic change set of changes by Coach Rod Underwood. You don't usually see him alter things this early. Uh, for sure. Um, the other thing that you have to note, and this is something else we were also talking about, this is a, a run of three games in, in a week uh, for, for Stumptown, including two uh, road games coming up here soon in, on Wednesday and then again next Saturday. Uh, so you got to think that's got to play into this a little bit. And here's Cuts with his first major touch of the ball over to Behran Onavia. So the formation remains the same as Odin Beck will search for Williams. The only difference is the players occupying the, the left attacking mid and forward spots. Garcia Sosa strolls onto this one. And now onto Williams. And there's a foul committed against Maryland. And now a bit of a tussle between Alvarado and Garcia Sosa. So I don't think the tempers rested at halftime. <laughs> Clearly not. Um, already causing a little uh, little messing about here so far. Um, the one thing that'll be interesting to see with, with Cuts and Longo sort of coming in is is if they are now deploying basically five attackers with Bejaran and Navia sort of as the lone sort of defensive midfielder option. Um, Cut's definitely more of a, an offensive-minded player than, than Stripling is for sure. Garcia Sosa with an in-swinging free kick. It's got good bend to it. Bejaran and Navia got ahead on it as well. Just floating over the bar, though. 
Stumptown starting in lively fashion. Yeah, you like to see that. That's a good response um, to the way that the half ended. Again, building that momentum, getting them into a good position uh, to, to try to score some goals. And it does look like Odenbeck has kind of slid into a little bit more of a of a defensive mode back. He's he's definitely further deeper than than any of the other attacking options at this point with and, uh, cuts at the top, actually. And Odenbeck did operate as more of a defensive midfielder before play, starting that game at right attacking mid against Cal United and making that instant impact. So he's used to playing alongside Bejarano Navia, perhaps a more attacking approach, Robert, from Coach Underwood. Yeah, I mean, and you, and you got to, right? You, you put yourself in a position where you're down 1-0, um, or you were put in a position where you're down 1-0, um, and now uh, you're going to have to to do something about it in the second half to get a, a result out of this one. Amponsa settling on it and trying to organize the troops. And some good link up finds Bejarano Navia and now out wide for Longo. Promising build up here from Stumptown and a lot crisper than a lot of that first half. Now McGrath losing out and it's sprayed over to Molly Carpe. Scored the equalizer last weekend. And now trying to attack Martinez once again and surging by him. C crossed for Cisse and ultimately deflected back to Gonzalez. Whew. Frankie Martinez having a little bit of trouble with his former teammate the couple of times that he's had him in a sort of one-on-one -on -one scenario. Um, that time Carpe actually beat him with pace uh, before it was just pure brute strength, but um, obviously has both of those things in the arsenal. And now McGrath, who, by the way, has come very deep to collect balls tonight. Yeah, I was just noticing that, especially in, in the, since this half has started, he is actually playing. Uh, he's moving. He was almost in the in the center back uh, lineup uh, here a minute ago, um, coming back to get the ball. Cuts is offside after that sweet spell of link up, and a free kick for Maryland. So outside of that one and a half chance, though, it has been all Stumptown in the opening five minutes of this second half. The question is, and it's the eternal question we've been asking all season, is when you see these bright spots, will it be reflected on the score sheet? The answers have been mixed here in 2021 as Cisse rushes free for a moment and a miscommunication between Gonzalez and Williams ultimately corralled by the Stumptown keeper. That was a nice defense there by Aponsa. Um, Cisse's definitely got the pace on him, but he, he did a good job of, of keeping him as close as he needed to and and ultimately making up the ground. And Robert, outside of that free kick, which was a brilliantly delivered cross from Cisse, he has been a bit quiet tonight. Yeah, they've done a good job of bottling him up as, as much as they as much as they could. Um, obviously, it, he is uh, going to be a problem, as you just saw with the ball at his feet. But um, if you can keep it away from him, like they've they've done a, a decent job so far, he can't hurt you if he does not have the ball. And ultimately, they've done a good job keeping him off it. Now, Carpe's given Martinez problems, but ultimately, that hasn't amounted to anything on the score sheet yet outside of the free kick goal, which didn't really involve either Carpe or at least Cisse on the on the finishing end of it. Brilliant cross from Cisse, but you can't really control who takes it for the other team. Martinez sprays this one down the near side for Williams. A flick on ricochets off Mason's face, and now Odenbeck. That looked like that hurt. Agreed. <laughs> And now, Nemhard. Stumptown looking far more confident to open this half than they did throughout most of the first. And it's, we'll see if they can keep up the tempo because ultimately that's how you're going to break this Maryland team down by stretching them with quick link up and then finishing chances. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking too. The, the pace of this is a lot nicer and a lot more, um, a lot pacier, uh, if you will, um, than, the, than the first half was through much of it. Longo collects, and now back to Williams, who had a brilliant touch to set that move up. Stumptown still moving it around, searching for that one incisive ball. And Martinez will settle now. There's McGrath out, way out again to, get, to come get the ball. And here is Longo on the edge of the area and hitting the side netting, an absolute firecracker that just rocketed past the Ooh, near post. That would have been quite a goal there from Longo. A very decisive um, kick there from, from Longo, took an opportunity, saw the hole, and just tried to whip it in there and almost got the better of Cockler. An absolute knuckling laser that just misses that near post, and you bet Cocker will be thanking himself for having <laughs> that side of the net covered. I don't know if 
If he would have been able to stop it, though, if it was on target, because no, that I, had a lot of power. Yeah, I think that was that was in the back of the net. If he, if he had, uh, even if he had, you know, technically had it covered uh, positionally, I think there was just too much on that. To I think that would have been in the back of the net if it had been over just a few more inches. Stumptown making more of an imprint on this match here in the second half. We'll see if they can keep it up as Maryland looks to alleviate some pressure now. Here's Kasai charging the opposite direction, and Williams. Does a whole fish dive to win the ball back. <laughs> that was unusual, but it worked. Um, and now Garcia Sosa. Madness popping off here at the Stumplex. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen anything like that before, Sam. I don't know if I have either. <laughs> now McGrath, the Spennymore England native, winning a free kick for the Stumps. And now McGrath growing into this more as well. But you have to, you have to give Garcia Sosa... And now Longo, their props. I mean, both of them really coming into their own here in the opening 10 of this half. Now Martinez searching for Williams, who's got plenty of time and space to make a decision here. And Longo, excuse me, that's cuts. Good team defending, and Cissé will stroll away with it. The speed and pace of this match picking up here at the beginning of the second here. Samuel Kasai, dink ball for Carpe, will wind up at Gonzalez's hands. Back and forth we go here to open the second half. Stumptown largely bossing things, but they still have to watch out for the counter. Ultimately, the counters would set up that free kick that led to the opener. And Stumptown's lone weakness, at least last year defensively, was defending set pieces. I mean, they conceded all four of their goals in some way, shape, some way, shape, or form from set pieces. Now, granted, a couple were penalties. But this is a Stumptown team that is going to be looking to ensure it tightens things up on those because the, the live play goals have also come for their opponents a little bit. Yeah, and in a lot of cases, though, it's been sort of second balls – like the, the, the Carpe goal from last week was, you know, on a, a good save from, from Gonzalez that bounces the wrong direction. And then suddenly uh, they have an opportunity to, to score off the, the sort of second second opportunity. So that's another thing they're going to have to watch out for, which those chances come in very similar type of circumstances. They're almost sort of live ball set pieces in a way where suddenly you have to be alert to something unusual happening in the moment. Garcia Sosa putting the work on Alvarado. He's drawing multiple defenders whenever he touches it now. Trying to find Bejarano Navi. A good interception by Kasai. And now long go for Stumptown. Therese Williams. Ooh. Brilliant roulette from <laughs> Bejarano Navia. And now Garcia Sosa on the near side. Flicked on for Williams. Low cross and corralled by Cocker. But more promise shown by the home side. That was that was excellent build-up play. Bejarano Navia with the uh, the pirouette there off the ball to, to get it going. Reach Williams just a little bit too close to the goalkeeper with his cross there. And now looking to counter the other way, a phenomenal long throw for Cisse. Surging towards Amponsa and gets by him. Sliding challenge, ricochets into Gonzalez's gloves, and ultimately I'd say good challenge, no real risk of any reprimand from the ref. Absolutely. Uh, Amposa realizing that Cissé has, has probably got the pace for him, um, but he does a good job of using his size to, to, to make up for ground there. And now Williams. Game far more open here in the first 15 of the second than it really ever was in the first. And stay with us, folks, on 11 Sports Network. This could pop off. We already have the animosity the physicality. Now it's time for this match to get super lively on both ends of the field. You're starting to see that here. Yeah, still a lot of control for Stumptown, but they're doing it in a, in a lot of a different way than they did in the first half. The first half was very was much slower, more controlled in that regard. Uh, and now part of it is just what they need to do because of the the circumstance of the game. But the the speed of this is, has been something else so far. Bejarano Navia searching for cuts. Cocker will clear. Only as far as Bejrano Navia and recycled by McGrath. And we talked about the story of Giovanni Bejrano Navia, obviously from Colombia, came to America due to his love of soccer and also looking, I mean, he played soccer to avoid danger in his hometown of Medellin. Low cross from Williams Ugh. searching for Garcia Sosa and 
Posian will stroll onto it. But Behran Renavia, he played to escape the dangers around him in Medellin, Colombia, and he's thrilled to be with Stumptown. He's grateful for the pro opportunity, and he plays like it every time. He always gives his full effort, and, you know, he always puts together very solid performances for Stumptown in defensive midfield. Yeah, he's the, the spark plug in the middle of the field um, who kind of makes things go uh, from a defensive pos positioning uh, situation. Um, really allows the, the center backs to, to do what they need to do. And again, as we talked about before, to allow the fullbacks to get forward. And he's a very versatile piece as well. Started his career with Stumptown in defense, in center of defense. They put a five back. They shifted him to defensive midfield as a pivot man to escape the press. And he's been there since. And it's been it's paid off for him and the coaching staff. As a throw will come for the Bobcats. We're just looking to settle on the ball a bit more and take the weight off this Stumptown pressure, which has been largely relentless here in the opening 15 of the second. <laughs> yeah, if you're from a Maryland point of view, this is not the way that you wanted this second half to start. At the same time, you kind of had to expect this is the way it was going to go. Um, when you are up on a team 1-0 going into halftime, you have to expect that the pressure is coming as this is a foul, it looks like, going in Stumptown's direction. Longo winning a free kick against Alvarado and taken very quickly. Switching the play for Williams. He's taking up a lot of space on that right-hand side in attack. And now Odenbeck. The Stumps just looking for an opening for that final ball. Cross cleared only as far as the Wake Forest man in Odenbeck. The product of Wake Forest for three years and it's going to be out of play for a Maryland throw and Jared Odenbeck shifting back to his more natural defensive midfield role that we've talked about he was a regular lineup fixture at Wake for three seasons he transferred there after one year at Georgetown and now looking to make an impact for Stumptown AC already has an assist to his name this fall cuts winning a free kick on the near side And just a heavy challenge. It looks like Alvarado may wind up in the book here. And instead, it actually Knows, looks to be uh, David Mason. Mason. Yep. So Mason in his second start, picking up yet another yellow. Uh, <laughs> that is his second yellow in as many starts. And uh, last, last game subbed off in the 78th minute. We'll see how long they keep him in that fullback spot on a yellow against increasingly tricky to handle Stumptown wingers. Yeah, I think we're up to full five, maybe yellow cards tonight. Maybe just maybe just the four. They're pushing the record. Regardless. Yeah, we had we had three in the first half, so I think we might up. That's at least four, maybe up as many as five. And a free uh, kick coming for Stumptown. Robert Garcia Sosa and McGrath stand over it. This looks more traditional, but you never know with these stumps. They always have a trick up their sleeve. Garcia Sosa hits the in-swinger to the back post. Enticing ball looking for cuts. It comes loose for Williams. And deflected out of play for a Stumptown corner. Well well played on, on all accounts. Great uh, great ball in from Garcia Sosa. Uh, great header there from, was that Bejarano Navi who got the initial ball on it? And then Reese Williams who just wound up for that thing. And he, he was going to get some contact on that one way or the other. Already scored off a corner against Maryland. Last weekend in the 10th minute, now chasing the equalizer. In swinging corner from Garcia Sosa. The ball is popped loose, cleared off the goal line by what looks to be Posian, and now recycled by Garcia Sosa. Flick on from Nemhard over to Longo. And it looked like it rolled past cuts. The deflected shot from Williams. Just chaos ensuing on the edge of the area. Now Nemhard. His ball will roll to Cocker and Maryland weathering the storm once again. Whew, that was a wild sequence right there. Lots of uh, shot opportunities and missed shot opportunities. I'm not sure what happened in the, the, the sort of second ball back in from Garcia Sosa. It looked like a couple of players were unsure what was happening there as the ball just sort of rolled past them. Reese Williams was able to get a shot on in the end, but... I'm very confused why Cuts let it roll. Yeah, I don't know. That I don't think Williams' location was their best shot opportunity. Was Cuts was was right on the edge of the of the the penalty spot there, so that would have been a much easier shot than what Reese Williams did get off eventually. 
And now McGrath playing it over to Mponsa. The Stumps just searching for the answer here. Playing far better than they did in the first, looking far more confident but just still searching for the equalizer and that final chance to really pressure Cocker's goal. Here's Williams. He's been a danger all second half. Clearance deflected by Garcia Sosa and now Nemhard. McGrath slithering through the penalty area, bundled down in the box and no call by the main official. Not making any friends down there, the official <laughs> from the Stumptown fans on that far side over there. William Randy Hoffman saying it is not a foul in the penalty area. Now breaking the other way is Cisse. The flag staying down on the far side. Outside of the boot shot will roll to Gonzalez without too much trouble. Three men warming up along the touchline for Maryland. It's Brian Arugueta, Pilawe Pato, and Javon Dawkins. And Dawkins has already made three starts this year, so a defender, a midfielder, and then Pato's also a midfielder. We'll see who comes off and makes way as Maryland looking to preserve this 1-0 advantage with less than a half hour remaining. And Robert, Stumptown's flashed a lot of good things this half, but what needs to change for them to level this up? <laughs> well... I, I bet you you can tell I can tell you can tell me what I'm going to say, right? Uh, you know, same old story. They, I think they've they've made opportunities for themselves. A couple of little not so great chances there. Um, that that last opportunity where Cuts kind of let the ball float away from him, and Williams had to take a less less quality shot. Not ideal, but they they're putting the pressure on. They just got to find a way to get that final ball in and to to finish it off. Here's McGrath. Flings it over to Longo, who's had a very bright start to this second half off the bench. And now searching for cuts down the line in the channel. Ball popped free, and it's ushered to Cocker without too much ensuing issue. That's another nice ball from Mponsa. Um, not quite able to, to uh, connect with, with, with cuts there at the end. And Stumptown perhaps surprising the Bobcats a bit by attacking through the middle. They focus so much on the flanks and overloading those flanks with fullbacks. This time just looking directly up the gut for cuts, and it almost paid off. Yeah, another uh, sort of alteration to this this lineup, this formation that we've seen from Stumptown. One thing I've been noticing, because it's right here sort of in front of us, is that Williams and Odenbeck are, are flip-flopping in a lot of cases. As you see it right here, as, as Odenbeck's coming back almost into a fullback position, so Reese Williams is able to get up almost as a winger. So the sort of inversion there to cover the ground to make sure that a player like Cissé can't get forward um, and get ahead and have no coverage whatsoever. Very interesting tactical move there. More tactical manipulation from Coach Underwood, just trying to find a way to spread this Maryland back line out. But speaking of Maryland, they're going to make three changes. As we mentioned, Brian Arugueta, Pilawe Pato, and Javon Dawkins are set to enter. And exiting, it looks like Samuel Kasai as well as Andy Alvarado. And we'll get an ID on the last man soon. It appears... Uh, Mason. It is going to be Davey Mason. So Alvarado Mason will exit. And Agu Argueta Dawkins and Pato get their shot. Argueta, the 23-year-old midfielder from Gaithersburg, Maryland. He played the final 23 minutes off the bench in place of Orsini against Stumptown last weekend. And he also played 45 minutes, 42 minutes at home against 1904 FC. He's made two appearances and made a start against 1904 as well. He's played in the El Salvadorian first tier. He's represented the national team at the U23 level. And he's also played at Germantown City in Maryland before moving to the Bobcats. So more changes on the way here. Pilawe Pato, another interesting change. 27-year-old from UMBC. And he's been with this club since they were named world-class Premier Elite in the 2018-19 season. Here's Bejarano Navia. Perhaps more defensive changes as 
They shove Pato in the center of midfield and they take off a winger in Alvarado who had a pretty quiet night. Meanwhile, Argueta looks like he's occupying some more space up top. It becomes almost a hybrid front three with him, Carpe, and Cisse. And a smart decision you figure to take the fullback Davey off for a guy like Dawkins just to make sure you don't worry about any red card situations emerging in the last 20 minutes and change. Yeah, you gotta you gotta look out for that, especially with how chippy this matchup has been. Uh, for sure, that's something you don't want to have as, as as a suspended player in that particular case. So Stumptown makes three changes to open the second and completely shifts the t the tide of the match. Maryland making three now of their own to try to re-establish control on this thing. Argueta tracks back, knocks it out of play. A Stumptown throw on the way on the near side. Sixty. Eighth minute here at the Sportsplex at Matthews in Matthews, North Carolina. You're watching the 11 Sports Network. Sam Goldfarb and Robert Morrison here bringing you all the NISA action here in match week six. Stumptown tr still trailing Maryland Bobcats 1-0, but playing far better and far more comfortably in possession. More quick link. Odenbeck sprays it over to Longo. And it's a driver that ultimately will roll into Cocker's gloves. But again, more promising buildup from the stumps. Yeah, again, everything but the final ball in that particular case. Um, but you like to see it. you got to keep the pressure up. That's the only way you're going to uh, find yourself in goal-scoring opportunities. And Cocker has tried to offset this pressure by finding Cissé on the counterattack through goal kicks and punts. And this time rolls out of play. So it's just an interesting way Maryland's keeping Stumptown honest, going the opposite direction. And Martinez will settle on this. The Stumptown faithful getting louder. Kevin the Tree back in attendance as well. You can see him on your screen. Stumptown fans getting rowdy here at the Plex. You love to see it, Sam. You love to see it. You love that they're packing it. It's a nice September... Evening, beautiful weather. Only thing Stumptown fans might want to see change is the scoreline. They may look to do that here. Long go a bit of trickery over for Williams. Good footwork by the fullback and out for a Stumptown corner. Yeah, good good work there from both Longo and, and Reese Williams uh, to recover in difficult situations. Williams especially uh, looked like he might lose that ball there for, to a sec for a second to, to Dawkins, but this is a good job of recovering. 71st minute, corner on the way, taken short for McGrath. And now Garcia Sosa. Good flick inside. The Spenny Moore England native can't quite slither past oncoming traffic, but Williams wins it back. Now Nemhard to Odenbeck. Stumptown loading up numbers around the penalty area. Decent cross, just a little over hit, and it rolls out of play for what should be a goal kick. I do not believe Dawkins got a touch to it. It, it. it looked like he tried to get a touch to it for sure. So I could see why there would be frustration on the part of Stumptown players because he, he stuck his leg up there like he wanted to, to do something about it. And then as if he sort of realized at the last second that, oh, wait, if I just let this ball go by me, that it's a goal kick. And that's that's good. Dawkins has been moved to the bench. He started the first three matches of the year. He came off the bench for 12 minutes against Stumptown Saturday. He's back out there at the fullback spot this week as well. And he was a regular in the 11. Excelled at CCBC Essex in 2016-17 at the community college level. And last year, he started 8 of 11 games. Odenbeck to take this free kick. Stumptown. The introduction of Longo and Cuts has worked wonders tonight. Yeah, it's a it's a nice addition, a nice move by Coach Rod Underwood to to get um, a little bit more pace out there. I mean, Travis Ward for all of his all the things that he does well is not the not the paciest player out there. Um, but you know, Longo and Cuts seem to be adding a lot more of that dimension. And you know, this seems to be a sort of you know four two three on 
on sort of some sort of you know steroidal type of situation. Uh, everything I didn't want to say it, but then I couldn't think of anything else. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't think I don't think that violates it. I hope not. Yeah. No PEDs yeah. in the box. We tonight, don't. Guys. We don't encourage that. We no, for for that. certain not. Um, but the the movement you're seeing, McGrath and Longo both come out all the way to the center backs to come get the ball. They just know the 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 time is is of the essence at this point. Stumptown playing with far more urgency this half and still just looking for the equalizer. They've got about 18 minutes to do it. Here's Odenbeck for Garcia Sosa. The men in white shirts roaming freely as Williams scoops this one up on the near side in a battle with Argueta and I believe knocked out of play for a Maryland throw to the frustration of Reese Williams. Now Pato with his first touch. Double teamed and Longo comes away with it. Now Garcia Sosa. Stumptown loading up attackers once again out for a Stumptown throw. Taken a bit too quickly for the rest liking as Pato get, picks himself up a yellow card. <laughs> he did not uh, seem to care for that. Surprising decision. That's Pato's first yellow of the season. This is the fourth consecutive match he's featured off the bench in. And Stumptown now with another throw. 74th minute. This is around the time Carpe got the equalizer for Maryland last Saturday. We'll see if the Stumps can rewrite history in inverse fashion. Throw taken too quickly for the officials liking. Now over to Unponsa. Take two goes off well enough. <laughs> Too quick. Yeah, okay. <laughs> they had to. They had to get it for the cameras. I, I guess so. <laughs> Here's Williams. Now McGrath, Stumptown, with everybody beyond midfield. And this is some offensive pressure for sure, um, from Stumptown's point of view. And McGrath charging forward. A bit of tricky footwork. Can't quite slide it through for Longo. Heavy pressure once again. Cisse will lose out to Bejarano Navia, who just bullied him off it. And now Longo. Stumptown with more initiatives in this half than we've seen the last couple matches here. And it's good to see them looking more comfortable in possession. Yeah, absolutely. You like to see them control this game. I mean, it's definitely within their their skill set to, to hold on to the ball and control it, but you don't want to kill the pace of the game in order to do that. And I think that's something they've done in this second half with, with great success so far. Um, Ponza charges forward and now looking out wide for Odenbeck. Played along to Williams at the touchline. Dives to save it in a really heavy collision. Oh, red card. On the far side, and there is a red card delivered. I believe that could be Fane. And now a heavy scrum ensuing alongside the touchline. It looked like Fane dangled the boot when Williams dove for it. And now everything popping off on the far side. Well, that's one thing <laughs> this this matchup needed was was a red card to add to the chippiness, I guess. And it's 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 getting uh uncomfortable down there on that end for sure. And we're on the far side having a little bit of difficulty seeing it. I'm not even actually sure who it was. It looked like it might have been uh, Fane tracking I think so, over. I think so because he's coming over to the side and, and definitely causing a stir. And, and now Cocker trying to get over and, and get his teammates away from it so they don't get any more cards. Yaya Fane, the 30-year-old from Abidjan, Ivory Coast. He's been a regular in the Maryland 11 the past year. This is his fifth straight start after coming off the bench in the opener. And yeah. a really frustrating loss for Maryland as they go down to 10 men with 15 minutes remaining. Fane dangling the boot, catching Williams as he dove to cross it in. And his night's over. Although he has still yet to leave the pitch. He, he seems to still be trying to make his case to the referee. I, I, I'm not sure that he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna get anything here. 
Um, I don't know that he has much to say about it. Um, and yeah, I mean, if he, if he could talk the referee out of a out of a red card, it'd be the first time it's ever happened. I think. You can talk the referee out of a red card. I want him as like, <laughs> I don't know, my my, uh, my number one advocate. I guess <laughs> absolutely. Um, looks like he's finally walking off the pitch. And it is it, it is Yaya Fane. Yep, absolutely. And also, as very close to the edge of the box, he's lucky on top of everything else that it wasn't a penalty. Because look at where that ball yeah. is sitting on the edge right of the box there, Sam. Right on the edge of the area as well. As this Williams looks very familiar, in. but on the other side, yeah? Yeah, Garcia Sosa standing over it. Another guy who can deliver a very good first ball. Back post ball, looking for Williams. It's flicked on for McGrath. Cannons it off the Stumptown barrier, banner at the Canopy Club, but can't quite keep the shot down. Whew. Stumptown now a man up for the final 12 minutes and change here at the Sportsplex at Matthews. You're watching the National Independent Soccer Association on the 11 Sports Network. Sam Goldfarb, Robert Morrison bringing you all the action. And Maryland Bobcats FC leading Stumptown AC 1-0. Richard Fork is header in the 23rd minute. Did the trick as another yellow has just been given. Um... This whole game popping off. Uh, yeah, not was it? Was it? I, I'm sorry, I wasn't. Was it a, a Maryland player? I believe so. Yeah, they they um yeah. I mean, look, I understand it. Like you're you're frustrated. You didn't think that was a, a red card, whatever the situation might be. But you also got to understand if you're Maryland that you're leading this game one nothing, and if you don't sort of keep switched on, that you can put yourself in a situation being down a man uh, to suddenly not be winning this game anymore so Garcia Sosa playing it on a cut Stumptown with a man advantage for the first time in their history we'll see what they can do with it cross whipped in and corralled by Cocker and it's going to take a Herculean effort for Maryland who's already been on the back foot the entire half to cling on to this one nil advantage we'll see if they can looking for Carpe deep ball is out of play and a Stumptown throw will come for the home side Bejrano Navia looks to reset quickly. Just a b even more urgency and more life spewing from this Stumptown side as they have a man advantage. Now Williams looks to play it back across for Longo and knocked out of play for a Maryland throw. 1-0 as we approach the final 10 minutes here at the Sportsplex at Matthews. Maryland still leading but in a more precarious situation than they've been all match after the red card from Yaya Fane. Amponsa um, gets in a wrestling match with Carpe and gonna lose out to a free kick and Argueta didn't quite love his reaction. Carpe still trying to get back to his feet. A lot of, lot of talking um, <laughs> tonight. These two, these two clubs, uh, no love lost type of situation as uh, a, another change looks to be in the offing for Maryland and for Stumptown, it looks like, here in the near future. Morian Musi warming up. He's made two appearances and one start for the Bobcats this season. This ball drilled long, intercepted by Odenbeck. And Williams. Odenbeck took a boot to the foot and they'll reset things quickly. Nemhard for Longo. Stumptown overloading the flanks once again with their fullbacks. And you wonder, with Maryland throwing everyone back, if Stumptown will find a way to unlock the defense, even with a man up. Now Williams dances past one. And a good recovery by Cissé to poke it free. <laughs> now Nemhard on the far side. Stumptown with eight minutes to chase this equalizer. The ball pops free once again. 
And Robert, Maryland has settled, done well to settle things down after the absolute chaos that ensued about four minutes ago. Yeah, that, that could have gone really south for them. I think they did a good job of, of sort of settling the game a little bit. They also know that really their main objective right now is just to hold the lead. And if, if that means they got to put all all of their outfield players behind the behind the ball, then so be it. But something's got to happen in this particular case, and they got the onus has got to be on some town, and that puts Maryland in an okay position, even down a man. Here's McGrath for Odin Beck. Stumptown ramping up the pressure once again, sliding it through for Yzma Longo. And I believe the flag may have been up on the near side anyway. Yep, looks like it. So two changes, one for either side. Morion Musi, Morion Musi will head in for the visitors. Meanwhile, Julio Rubio will replace Jared Odebeck for Stumptown. And so this is a defensive swap. Carpe will exit. Musi will enter, making his third appearance. And Rubio, the usual substitute off the bench for Stumptown, making his fourth of the year. His longest cameo of the year came last Wednesday against Michigan Stars, and he's got seven minutes to make an impact here. So, Robert, Maryland fully committing to defense with Argueta, the only man forward, as a midfielder. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you got to – at this point, it's, again, about controlling the game and not letting Stumptown uh, nip, a, nip a goal here and, and take a point. Um, and the only way – and you're – what are you doing with a striker up, up top with down a man at this point anyway? So, makes sense to, to make that move. Um, Ponzo slides this one over to Martinez. And now down the line for Nemhard, who rushes to keep it in play. And now the whistle uh, goes. A throw coming for Maryland. Six minutes remaining here at the Sportsplex at Matthews. Still 1-0 Maryland Bobcats FC. But Stumptown, a man up and ratcheting up the pressure once again. They've had their bright moments but this is the big test. When your back is against the wall, you've struggled to score goals and you're a man up, can you produce something? Here's Williams, who's had a very impressive display here in the second half and drew the red card on Fane. Switching the play for Nemhard and cuts. Along the touchline, battling with Dengler. Will retreat and reset for Nemhard. Cleverly played through for Bejarano Navia. Williams played on for Rubio. And excellent defending from Musi. And Behran Onavia obstructing what looks to be Musi in a free kick coming for the visitors. So Dawkins wins the free kick for Maryland and they will take their time to take this free kick. Yep, no rush from a Maryland's point of view at this point. Um, oh, no rush at all for the rest of the of the half here. But Martinez will stroll onto it. This is the first game, as Robert mentioned, of a crucial three game in seven day stretch for the Stumps. On Wednesday, they play New Amsterdam in upstate New York at Hofstra Stadium, and then the following Saturday at league leaders and. Champions in pretty much any NISA competition in the last year and a half, Detroit City FC. That's a 7.30 game, and you know that Keyworth will be absolutely rocking for that one. Yeah, a, a, a rough string, and, and you had to think um, this was the game that they they needed to have heading off onto that um, that road trip that they have coming up. Um, you you didn't want to put yourself in a situation where you're, you're going to be um, coming off a, a loss going into that tough stretch. Cuts, charges down the far side, and the ball is loose, recycled by Nemhard, but I believe a free kick given against Stumptown as two Maryland players go down. The next game we will have for you is Saturday, September 25th, exactly two weeks from today at 7 p.m. Eastern. They get the reverse fixture against New Amsterdam here at the Sportsplex. Then they'll travel to L.A., and after that, they're back home on October 9th to play L.A. in that reverse fixture. Lots of reverse fixtures <laughs> in our, which is which is very interesting um, to see the second half of a of a reverse fixture like that um, to see how the team's going to react to each other. This one has uh, been pretty much as advertised. I think um, the sort of chippiness and um, 
physicality of, of that came at the end of, of the first match between these two teams has, has definitely continued tonight. It's been a knockdown, drag-it-out match, and we even had the first red card in Stumplex history. Now for Williams on the near side, who's been a menace down there. And brilliant link up. He's bundled over in the penalty area. Oh, and a wow. foul given. I believe they may have just booked Reese Williams for yeah. diving. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Who is not had and then he got a red card. He's done. Reese Williams is also out of this game. Uh, I'm assuming not happy about the call, and I'm assuming the yeah, second yellow is a dissension. But he's uh, he's done now for the night. Reese Williams. Reese Williams absolutely livid. Bundle taken down just inside the penalty area. He gets booked for diving, and then. Earns a red card for the descent. So 10 on 10 here for the final two minutes. And we just talked about the first red card Whoa. in Stumplex history. There's <laughs> the second. Uh, yikes. This one's gotten a little out of hand. Um, this is this is a uh, – this is the bad dream soccer match. Yeah, this is the one that when people are – when people talk about soccer being kind of – kind of not exciting. I don't know what they're talking about. This is this is this is crazy. Sorry, I don't even know how to how to explain this. Um it's the most it's the <laughs> most insane match we've called together. Robert. Uh that is for sure. 10 on 10 here to finish it out. Um which thereby immediately removing Stumptown's advantage that they had um which would have been very important for these last couple of minutes down a goal. Argueta navigating past Bejarano Navia and a throw coming taken quickly by Maryland. 10 on 10, quick cross to the back post. Cisse was free and he just couldn't quite steer it on target, had a full goal to work with. Whew. Man, I thought that was that was it. I thought that was gonna be the the, the so-called, uh, you know, dagger for 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 ba Maryland, but uh, just missed, missed it somehow, I'm not sure how. This game has accelerated to a fever pitch. <laughs> This is this is crazy. <laughs> That's all I have to say. That's not all I have to say. I'll say more things. <laughs> Long go trying to make this match even crazier. Looking for that equalizer, and you figure everything's been dispersed evenly. Yellow cards, red cards. The only thing not dispersed evenly is the score. Maryland still holding on to that 1-0 lead despite Stumptown controlling everything the second half. They've just been unable to break through, and Cissé could have put the nail in the coffin a minute ago. Long go with some Ronaldo stepovers. Can't quite charge past Forca, but recycled by Bejarano Navia. Now McGrath, back post cross, looking for cuts. It's loose. And just surviving once again. Now Cisse will spray it for Argueta. White shirts tracking back, and five minutes will be added to the clock. Of course. <laughs> There was plenty of stoppages, uh, I'd say. You think? <laughs> um, Free soccer, I guess. Yeah, that. Wow. In this game, it might be good and bad. <laughs> Long go. Searching for the through ball. It's popped free once again. Another wrestling match. Moosey wins a free kick in his penalty area. And now Maryland will take their time strolling onto this one. We're well into stoppage time now. Maryland looking to make another change. And it's Khalid Balagun. He's only made one appearance. It was on the season opener, and he had an assist in it. He's going to replace Argueta, who's kind of surprised he's exiting, <laughs> given he came on about Not very 25 long ago. minutes ago. Yeah, that's interesting. So you Balagun, the big target man up top. Don't often see a, a, a sub taken out in these particular situations, but there you are. And Rubio has Pato on his radar and now back for Martinez. Can Stumptown find the equalizer here at the death? McGrath searching for Longo. Good work by Dawkins, and he'll win a free kick for the Bobcats. Maryland Bobcats FC just looking to see this one out. They've held the lead since the 23rd minute. Richard Forca's header at the back post took care of business. Since then, we've been in for maybe the biggest emotional roller coaster in Stumplex history. I'd, I'd, say, th I'd say that's fair. Um, Both on the field and, I mean, I guess on the call as well. This game has been absolutely <laughs> mental to cover. And now searching long for Balagun. 
That hit his hand. Officials did not see it as Mponsa expresses appeals. And Mbalagun will rocket his way towards the corner. Sam, we should also clarify, Reese Williams didn't actually get two yellows. He had a yellow card earlier in the match, um, as so, you may recall. So that was actually a second yellow on the dive, and what, hence the red card. So he just got sent off for diving in the penalty area, and I'm sure he would have gotten a second yellow shortly <laughs> thereafter yeah. regardless. He was, uh, he was trying to be the first person to ever receive three yellow cards in a match. That actually did happen in a game once. I, I believe you. Yeah. Uh, the referee lost track. And I don't even think the guy got sent off for the three yellows. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that figures. Gonzalez will reset things. And now Martinez. Clock ticking down here at the Stumplex. Stumptown AC trailing Maryland Bobcats FC. 1-0 in the Dying Embers. Rubio for Longo. And now Bejarano Navia. Martinez. It's been an absolute battle here in Matthews, and the sprinklers are on. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> the match will continue as Cut scoops this up, looks for the cutback, and the sprinklers are on. Oh, my goodness. As if this game couldn't get any weirder. And now the game's been stopped because the sprinklers are running in Stumptown's half. What is happening? Well, you can't say this hasn't been interesting. <laughs> uh, this is um, now. Something. I've never. I've definitely never seen this before. You're watching the National Independent Soccer <laughs> Association on Eleven Sports Network. Sam Goldfarb, Robert Morrison bringing you all the action here as the match is at a pause. <laughs> Stumptown AC currently trailing Maryland Bobcats FC 1-0 here in stoppage time. We've seen about at least 10 red cards, or yellow cards in this game, not red cards. 10 yellow cards in this game and, and two red cards. The first two in Stumplex history. We're, it, at, we're at seven yellows and two reds. Okay, seven yellows and two reds. We've seen nine cards tonight, and now the match has come to a pause as there are four sprinkler heads that are just out of control <laughs> in Stumptown's half. Uh. And Stumptown trying to chase the match, Robert, and obviously they have the momentum of building up. How does something like this uh, change things as you reach the final two minutes? I don't even know. Because <laughs> I've never seen n n nothing like this has ever happened before in anything that I've ever seen. I mean, and you figure it would have to like disrupt some momentum. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, but, yeah. I mean, other than that, like this is the strangest stoppage of play maybe ever. Um, especially because they let it continue for like 30 <laughs> seconds yeah, they when they went on. They let cuts they were continue all, the move. Because yeah. they were all the way over here, and then it's like, well, we got to stop. I mean, this is certainly going to add time to the end of this match, uh, if, if nothing else, but this is... Uh, in a game that has provided us with some bizarre things, this, Sam, is the most bizarre. If you're a Nisa fan, uh, this might be the most exciting match of the day uh, for <laughs> a million reasons other than this. Yes, before this happened, this was this is exciting and and and, and interesting, and and I hope someone notes this in the in the game notes. Like sprinklers went off. Now the only other thing comparable is the LA Force when they were attempting to qualify for a playoff spot late in the season. I forget who they were playing, but they were at a home ground with no lights. Oh, yeah, and yeah. so because there were no lights in the 63rd minute, the game got totally postponed, and the Force were awarded, I believe, a 2 or 3 nil victory because they were winning. Lovely. That's the only comparable thing <laughs> in National Independent Soccer Association play we've seen to this. This is uh, very surprising. I I As keep waiting to see somebody like going running across to go fix something, but it's it's just still. Aside from the fact that I want to see what's going to happen to that part of the field, like hopefully yeah, we don't have, slippery. we don't have to use that side for any more time. But wow, <laughs> this is certainly the strangest thing. This has got to be the the most interesting uh, Stumptown match ever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and Stumptown plays an exciting style of football, and they've shown off their chops tonight, especially in the second half. They built up pretty well. They draw the red card. Reese Williams draws the red card on Yaya Fane, and then about ten minute, or seven to ten minutes later, 
gets the second yellow for diving in the penalty area. Um, hey, there we go. And now the sprinklers are off. Hooray. I wonder, you wonder how much time will be left as Stumptown will reset things through Amponza. It's good we can finish the match. <laughs> All we need is a is a 90 plus 7 equalizer to to really add to the complete the craziness. And long go back for Martinez. Stumptown looking to reestablish the momentum they had before the stoppage. And Rubio wins a free kick on the near side. Hey, this is as good an opportunity as any. Against Chicago House, they had a similar free kick that almost wound up temp testing the back of the net and Mike Novotny. They have another chance here down 1-0 as Kevin Gonzalez will rush up beyond midfield. The Stumps desperately chasing an equalizer, trying to preserve a point from a match they played pretty well in in the second half. And Garcia Sosa with the in-swinger on his left foot. Back post, looking for Longo. Good punch there by Cocker. And now Cisse charging forward and charging free. Missed the big chance to put the game out of reach before the red card. And now he is bundled over in the attacking third, and he draws a yellow on Rubio. There we go, number eight. We're getting closer to that, ten. <laughs> ten total <laughs> cards in this match. Whew. And Cissé missing the chance to put the match out of reach right after, I should say, uh, Reese Williams picked up the red to level the playing field. And he has had a pretty quiet night outside of that. He did have the brilliant assist, uh, which, I mean, yeah. you have to give him his props for that. But on ball, we haven't seen him assert himself as much as we're used to. Uh, part of that is credit to Stumptown for bossing possession all night. And now we're just about ready to get things back underway. So... Longest five minutes of stoppage time. I mean, it'll be beyond five. We don't uh, have the clock consistently running here at think? the Stumplex. Uh, as this is reset through Cissé, he'll try to charge to the corner. Gives it to Balagun, the big target man. And he's fouled on the near side. And another free kick on the way for the Bobcats. Merrill wow. And now the final whistle goes. Maryland Bobcats FC have come to Matthews, North Carolina and gotten a massive three points against Stumptown AC, their first ever win against the Stumps in three tries. The goal was courtesy of Richard Forka in the 23rd minute, a free kick against the grain of play a little bit. Mohamed James Cissé with a terrific ball to the back post, and he cannoned it into the top right corner with his head. That was the difference, and in one of the weirdest matches in Stumptown AC history, they fall short, and they can't come away with it with a point, unfortunately. The next match for Stumptown, as we alluded to, on Wednesday, September 15th at New Amsterdam. Then they go to Detroit next Saturday. And Robert, heading into that really tough stretch to finish off three matches in seven days. What are you saying to the boys in the locker room, if you're Coach Rod Underwood, after that absolutely insane cu culmination <laughs> of events that just took place? Yeah, I mean... Disheartening in a lot of ways um, would would be a way to describe that second half. They they were out on the front foot. They they were really putting the pressure on on Maryland, and they just they, again they couldn't find a way to to take advantage of the opportunities that they have, and and, and that continues to be a, a refrain that we talk about repeatedly throughout this um, out this season for Stumptown, but also the sort of chippiness that that came late in the game and all the cards and. And the sending offs and the just how crazy it got was just, um, you know, you, you, you got to give your team uh, props for, for going after it and for having heart and all that kind of stuff. But they have they have got to figure out a way to to manufacture goals in a different way, um, because these sort of no goal, one goal sort of finishes for the team are, are starting to compile and they're putting themselves in a bad situation as they head into a rough stretch against two of the better teams in, in, in Nisa. Stumpdown held, head score, held scoreless for the second time in three matches. Only one goal in their last three games. They'll be looking to change that against a new Amsterdam team that has been pretty solid but has allowed eight goals in five matches this year so we'll see how things change going forward so that'll do it for our coverage here of the national independent soccer association on 11 sports stumptown ac falling short one nil against maryland bobcats fc we'd like to thank all of you for tuning in for sam goldfarb robert morrison jacob glenn and everybody at full scale production we'd like to thank you guys for watching our broadcast and stick with us as we have more coverage coming up throughout the rest of the season have a good night everybody you watched another broadcast of nisa <laughs> that you did